You may know Aldous Huxley from his famous book, Brave New World, but later in his life, he wrote another book about a cactus. But this wasn't just any cactus. This one had the power to unlock the secrets to some of life's biggest mysteries. Huxley was searching for answers to a question. His question was, what is the mind? We can't see it, we can't measure it, and we can't even really define it very well, but we know it's there. And one day, he stumbled upon an answer that's just beginning to reemerge today. Take a one cap, just something light. Mm -hmm. You'll feel good. The mushrooms want you to like them. Psychedelics. 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 Psychedelic and consciousness research. Two psilocybin trips. I'm beginning to wonder now if this is the greater reality. So after listening to tons of podcasts with people talking about psychedelics, I really seriously started considering taking them myself, but I wanted to learn more. And that led me to this book by Aldous Huxley called The Doors of Perception and Heaven and Hell. Apparently towards the end of his life, Huxley became obsessed with trying to figure out the nature of consciousness. And that led him to the small cactus plant known as peyote. And more specifically, what he was really interested in was a particular chemical in that cactus called mescaline. So mescaline, also known as 345-trimethoxyphenethylamine, is a psychedelic compound and it's found in the buttons of the peyote cactus. That's this part right here. Mescaline alters your state of consciousness and it distorts your visual perception, which results in a trip that can last anywhere from 60 minutes to 12 hours. So one day Huxley got his wife and his doctor together in his home and he took four tenths of a gram of mescaline. After that, he got nice and cozy in his chair he sat there waiting for about a half an hour, and then the trip began. Now, Huxley didn't have the most visually creative mind. He was obviously a really creative person, but words were his medium, and it was typically really hard for him to imagine mental images of things. But pretty soon, after taking mescaline, that all changed when he noticed slow glowing lights dancing around him. Pretty soon, he started to see surfaces contracting and expanding, vibrating with this radiant pattern of energy all around him. He noticed some flowers on a nearby table, and he says here, instead of seeing the color of the flowers, I was now seeing what Adam had seen on the morning of his creation, the miracle, moment by moment, of naked existence. So hold on, what's going on here in terms of the brain? Well, in Huxley's time, research showed that drugs like mescaline could slow down the metabolism of glucose, which restricts the supply of sugar that can get to your brain. And that lack of a steady supply of sugar was thought to be responsible for interfering with certain enzyme systems, which lowers cerebral efficiency. And that causes these distortions that we call trips. And a large part of Huxley's mescaline trip had to do with light and the effects of light on perception. He started to see light emerging from objects with different intensities. And the intensity was based on the quality or the nature of those objects. For example, there were books that seemed to be glowing on his shelf, pulsating and radiating with this beautiful source of energy. But there were other books on the same shelf that were dull and unanimated. And he noticed that it seemed like the good books were the ones that were glowing. Obviously, those books had a lot of meaning to him, and that seems to be why he was experiencing this glow effect. But what makes something meaningful in the first place? And why don't we see meaningful things as these glowing orbs of beautiful energy all the time? Well, that takes us back to Huxley's original question. For a long time, we thought of the brain as this animating creative tool that draws together things from our surroundings to create existence. But Huxley had a different idea. Instead of thinking of the brain as this creative tool that builds things, he saw the brain as something that reduces things. That idea was based on the work of French philosopher Henry Bergson, who claimed that the main function of the brain is eliminative, not productive. In this view, the brain acts like a reducing valve, which funnels all of the complexity of the universe 
into a selective, narrow flow of information. Think of it like this. There's essentially an infinite amount of facts and it'd be impossible for any one individual to try to acknowledge all of the facts at once. And even if you could, you wouldn't want to because most of the facts would be relevant to you. This infinite amount of facts creates complexity and organisms have to reduce that complexity to survive. So the brain's job is to act like a filter that looks for signals in an infinite sea of noise. It lets in a very small amount of information that's useful and it shuts out everything else. And what comes out on the other side of that valve is this small trickle of information that we call consciousness. Our perceptions are the result of how much the brain is reducing the complexity that's around us. And the theory is that psychedelics can actually open that valve back up and allow us to experience things that were previously being filtered out of our awareness. There's a great line where Huxley says, my mind wasn't primarily concerned with measures and locations, but with being and meaning. And he talks a lot about the meaning that's being revealed to him in the form of light and color. One of my favorite parts of the book is in the essay, Heaven and Hell, where he talks about how colors and light influence our perceptions and he gives a lot of examples, like the difference between a Matisse versus a Rembrandt, or the fact that people have always been drawn to shiny objects like gemstones, which have this inherent value in them. But now in the modern world, that experience is being hijacked by things like metal and neon signs that shine in the same way that those precious stones do, but the meaning at the core of those objects isn't the same. And psychedelics can kind of remind you of the meaning that's nested in those objects. Huxley's writing style really brings the full psychedelic experience to life. You're reading what he has to say with this sense of wonder and excitement, and the benefits of mescaline sound great. But then what about the downsides? It seems like for every positive story I hear about psychedelics, there's also other stories about people that lose their minds. In fact, in Doors of Perception, Huxley actually acknowledges the close similarity between a mescaline trip and schizophrenia. He says, the schizophrenic is like a man permanently under the influence of mescaline and therefore unable to shut off the experience of a reality which he is not holy enough to live with and once embarked upon this downward road, the infernal road, one would never be able to stop. So yeah, I didn't finish this book inspired to go out there and take psychedelics right away. I don't know, I think with YouTube and podcasts, it just seems like there's so much information about this stuff now, so many stories out there that you can listen to. It kind of changed the way that I felt about reading the book because I was really thinking to myself, you know, this could have been a podcast. I don't know if this story really warrants a book, but then again, books were podcasts in that time. If you wanted to share your ideas and your experiences, you didn't have the internet and all of these platforms that let you reach an audience. They didn't exist, so you had to write a book. So for that reason, I think it's a cool snapshot to have that documents this influential person talking about ideas that really weren't widely held at the time. The copy I have is the Harper Perennial Modern Classic. It contains Doors of Perception and Heaven and Hell, and it also includes an essay called Drugs That Shape Men's Minds. So lots of value and it's a really easy read. It's less than 200 pages. There's a link in the description if you want to purchase a copy for yourself. And if you're interested in psychology and exploring ideas about the mind, there's another video I want you to watch where I review a book by one of the world's leading experts in the field of psychiatry. You can watch that right here. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone.